You're watching Antagovision. Copyright free images. They're just like good black and white. Yeah, yeah. And then I just. Uh, you know, oh, the, I love that series. Like, yeah. It's so, I love that because you know there's the whole standardized American image of you know happy mom and dad and the family. And this is actually <laughs> from a um, up, uh, this is from a Boy Scout handbook. And strangely enough, the kid that's in the image looks a lot like me. So every time I started doing it, I was just going. Oh, that's so weird. Look, yeah, <laughs> isn't that creepy? Yeah, it, it looks like me as a little kid, and it looks like my daughter too. Oh. With that one with the mustache, looks like your daughter. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, strangely enough, this looks like my ex-girlfriend's father, and that's really weird too. And she hasn't seen them because she's. But are you making them look like them? Oh no, I actually that was. Her. Yeah, she bought. This is something of mine from the from the late nineties. I like this. And one I was a doing non-objective work because where I'm from. For me to sell to the bigger collectors in Florida, yeah, yeah. they don't necessarily buy what they would buy in Europe or Tokyo. This is stuff I can sell here in bigger cities. But this is the kind of thing I was selling Miami for, you know, 10, 15 grand. And, wow. and she bought this from me right before I got ready to come back up here. So uh, she sold her house in Florida and moved back up to the apartment. And, um, and I gave her, I gave her a deal on it. She she that's, and there were things I had left here when I, you know, we broke up while I was there. So I don't buy it. You know, I can only <laughs> off from finishing it because I was actually going to put a picture of uh, of myself and George Bush right here, <coughs> and then, then there'll be another color coming over top of this. But it'll have hair. They'll have hair all over them. Cool. But they're playing. Yeah, I like that one. The brown, purple. the weird smeary brown. It's good. <laughs> no, it's good. This is well, so I solid. Haven't, it's good. I haven't painted in a long time. I've actually have not really painted for about a week or so. I just got in a new relationship and I'm over there and stuff, and I needed a break because I've been like really painting way too much and I needed to take a break. But break is good. Yeah. yeah. Break is good, especially if you have a girlfriend. Yes, yes, it's been really nice. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm very happy person. Girlfriend, no. All right, yes. Yeah, right. We'll see. About no that. girlfriend this year. We'll see about it. Uh, no, I, I think. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Well, what's nice about the projector is it's very easy to just transcribe something, you know. Over yeah, the yeah. Game. I like that one too. It's great. The kid in the straight jacket. It's fun. It's fun. So, uh, and I'll show you. I, I'm trying to pick out. I like this one a lot too. It's great. Yeah, I like that one too. Well, I've I've been wanting to do fake history. See, I have a series called Jesus. And um, and it's starting to get major notice. I've got all these these very successful friends who've been helping me out, but you know it's it has to work on its own. You know, people can't just help you yeah, sort yeah. of get to where you need to be. What you do has to get you there. And if, and if it's not there, it's just not there, and it won't work. But so uh, this is Jesus film, and this uh, it was a cartoon series making fun of my hometown. It's like the church and mm -hmm. and uh, clan kids. This is the bacon rules. <laughs> this is the kill whitey stick. Oh, these are great, yeah. And I, and I don't own most of these are sold. Uh, this is W. W. Smith's Homosexual Reeducation Center. So it's a comic nice. book. It was yeah. a cartoon with all these characters like Pastor. But Ford. all these objects. And uh, here's here's one of my favorites. Here's Turtle who runs the terrorist catchers. <laughs> so he runs around catching terrorists. How old is, is that? Uh, I started working on it in 90, I, 98. I started writing it and then drawing it in 99. And, um, and I met Kelly and she had worked with Chris Claremont of X-Men fame and was Neil Gaiman's assistant and worked with him. And so I, when she saw this, she said, I have friends you need to meet. And so Neil came and visited us like a couple months after we started seeing each other saw this and said, yes, you need to make a book. And he said, well, I think, Kelly, you and he should make it together. So he learns how to make a book. And then, so now it's, you know. You don't like cats? I'm very allergic to them. Really? My girlfriend is. Well, you met her the other night. Yeah, she, yeah, so you get like puffy eyes yes. and sneezing and coughing. And, 
There you go, girl. Sorry about that. My throat was getting scratchy. <laughs> Ball thing. So I'm going to bring something, one of these right here. So here's, here's these are new Jesus full pieces right here. I love this one right here. That's one of my favorites I've done recently. I'm using projectors and, and then hand drawing and handwriting. And here's the clan family. So basically I took that, the, the, the layout, the, the composition of, well, of the family and then I just put clan suits on them. Simultaneously, I work on Jesusville, and I have. So I'm gonna restretch it. I'm gonna go get stretcher for it tomorrow. I'll probably put it together there. So um, and then take it apart and bring it back. But I'm just gonna show one big one. This is, you know, I mean, you don't really have these are these are four by six, so they're gonna take up one of those big walls. Local merchandise company, and I created that symbol right there. Those are silk screens. That's at the Howe Festival. Um, last year and uh, that symbol ended up becoming quite famous and we promoted it LA San Francisco and the Northwest and then brought it back for the RNC week you know around the whole time in the Howe Fest and it just took off so it, we a company sprouted up around that image right oh, there. That's cool. yeah. I'm, wearing, stuff I'm wearing one of the one of the shirts right now and so I'm rebuilding my website right here and so what I, I used to have a blog on there, you know, that just constantly writing things and talking about things that we were doing. So I'm just now rebuilding this and putting it back together. There's such thing as a call as tipping point. And what happens is these the people who get control, they push it and push it and push it and push it until there's a certain point where the public reacts to it. Right. And you can't and they can't get them back because once they piss the public off, then the public so, is going to go exactly opposite. And they're going to and so America you know, by and large, is, is working class, you know, normal people who don't really pay attention to stuff. But what they do pay attention to is things like Katrina. Right. Because Katrina hits home because it hits the middle class, you know. Gas prices it hits the middle class. Oh, okay. And they, you know, people, like where I'm from in Florida, in northern Florida, I mean, they love Bush. But they won't love Bush after the gas prices go up about $4. They're going to hate him because he's an oil man, they know that. Yeah. So when I first got in here, I just, you know, because I, I left a studio twice as big as this apartment. Yeah. So I came here and I'm like, okay, I've painted in here before, and Kelly and I actually painted it in, in this room together. And we take that bed and we would flip it up on the side. And this wasn't here, so it's just one big open room, and she painted on that wall and I painted mm -hmm. on this wall. And so, you know, we just move out of each other's way, or if one of us would go outside and paint. and. Uh, it's just so funny how this has become so goddamn claustrophobic for me. I can't ramp in here anymore. Yeah. I have to go outside now because it's just because I'm not used to being closed yeah. in on a painting. So when you get something that's big and should go in a museum or should go in a big collection, you know, like a lot of galleries can't move things like that. Yeah. You know, you got to have, and it's not that it's not ultra wealthy people that can buy that. I mean, people who aren't ultra wealthy buy paintings at you know that at that price, but you have to have somewhere to house it. Yeah, yeah. Take care of it, and, and you want it. I, I mean, truly, one of the reasons why I'm in New York and selling here, why I want to sell here, is because it's um, these collections go to the auction houses, and that's what you want. And you know, a lot of people like these. A lot of times in the '80s, you know, the 20 year olds, you know, like Basquiat and people like that, and hearing, you know, the next thing they were now, it's like by the time they were 25 years old, they were in the auction houses because they were right here and they were selling to the right people and. You can't do that anywhere but here. You have to be in New York. So here's what I, this is one of the things that I use. It's, they're the copyright free images. Oh, clip art. Clip art, yeah. And they, they work really well in terms of, you know, putting them on, uh, put the images on. I got different, I got, you know, get resource material from all over the place. I go to libraries, go to history books. A lot of these things are from history books. And you just crank. Yeah, well, I, I'm approaching this, like for instance, a lot of these are very basic colors because I want to make prints of them. Mm -hmm. So I know, I mean, if you ever made a, a serograph, it's, you know, you don't want to put too many colors. Like that's, that's not going to be a print, but let's say something like Gilbert and George or one of the, like Keith Haring. Oh, that's Gilbert and George. Yeah, you know, it's like four colors, you know, and it keeps it, makes it simple for me to go and reproduce mm -hmm. it. Yeah. We actually, my ex-girlfriend and I and one of my good friends who used to do chalk and vermilion accounts, 
we did prints right here in this room. Um, cleaned the screens in the shower. It was great. We had a fucking table, drying tables and everything. Cool. And Kelly and I would just move stuff around and just... How long is that gonna dry? It'll take like not too long, like five minutes of that. And then it's Budweiser beers all night. <laughs> Kevin Sear, age. 28. And your occupation? Unemployed slash artist. My name is Peter Petrine. Pete Petrine to my friends. I'm 31 and I'm an artist. Artist. Have a job, right? Unemployed artist. Unemployed. That's fucking being an artist 24 7, 365. That's it. Thank you. Antagonist. Right. That what an antagonist means to me yeah. is going and just not fucking making any excuses for shit and fucking going and putting it up where you need to put it up. Alright, Kevin, what, you're, you're sort of a new. A new antagonist. New antagonist. Uh -huh. One week old. One week. <laughs> This means doing the art, doing... You know how lucky you are to jump right up to Yes, the I do, I do. I'm extremely grateful. I it's mean, amazing. Luck, lucky's a relative term. Right? <laughs> antagonist. antagonist. It means moving people, moving people with your artwork. It means, like, doing the artwork. Because you have to, there's nothing else you can do. You have to do the art. Okay. We're doing a night called the Antagonist Night, man. What do you think of that? Antagonist. Who are you? Antagonist. Antagonist, the antagonist movement. You know what that means? We make art and we antagonize people. Yeah, no, no, what do you I don't think about that? that shit. You don't? No. Why not? No, it's for a good cause. Don't break that shit. Don't, don't break. Oh, man. No, come it's, on. Like, it's not it's about, about that, that stuff. stuff. To move people with artwork. Oh, I it's love it. Oh, it's about no, artists who don't have oh, any money I, and they're just doing it for the love, man. Love oh, baby, I love. appreciate everybody to Lower East Side. And anything you need, I'm there for you. The show is all about taking your people you know, your friends, and putting them in the extraordinary situation, the dictator situation. Okay, now Pete, why, why would you want to do that? Because I like to flip scripts and change the identity of all motherfucking people. Because everybody could be fucking a revolutionary, or anybody could be an antagonist, anybody could be anything, you know what I'm saying? It's the limitations that they put upon themselves that make them whatever they are, you know what I'm saying? I got you. So fuck them. <laughs> Alright, so what do you think about the turnout tonight? Turnout's great. For yeah. Monday night, it's fantastic. Alright. <laughs> John Vance, I'm 25, and I make church logos. Original motivation or idea for the Ethan painting? It was Ethan's idea for... Did you think he was an asshole for asking for a painting of himself? No. <laughs> Not particularly. Uh, everyone else comments on it. I didn't. I didn't think of that myself, though. Now there's been some uh, sort of controversy, uh, namely uh, emanating from Ethan himself about the uh, the uh, waistline of the Ethan painting. Would you care to comment on that? <laughs> it's from a photograph. That's uh, you know, I'm just painting. I'm just painting what's there. I actually trimmed it down a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, what he said earlier was if he was a real dictator, he could have had you shot for painting him so unflatteringly. What's your comment on that? That, that could be true. Uh, he, he commissioned it about two years ago, and I finished it about three months ago. Yeah, I got a raw deal. It's okay. I broke even. <laughs> All right, so do, but don't you think raw deal is hand in hand with the whole antagonist? <laughs> now I know. Thomas Sarvello delivery man and photographer. I am 26 years old. Jamie is a friend of mine who's a bartender and a recent uh, 
finisher of her realtor's license. And she's just a very interesting, sharp looking person. And I thought that she would portray kind of a strong yet like likable character who could be a dictator in some sense. Like, uh, not that she was a dictator, but like Ava Perone, like, was, you know, what kept her husband in office in, in Argentina. So I felt like that was kind of an idea, but like to make it more her own and not just copy someone else's style. So um, I thought that with the photograph, it like the context of it all just wouldn't quite make it. And I wanted to make it kind of seem like something you would see in a public office, like with the drapes on it and like just to make it look like this is this is our, our, our person, we're gonna make it look nice, or it's like in a courthouse, you know, or in like a library above the circulation desk. Some shit that like would just be there, like, and everyone, you know, is like, oh, here's our, here's who's running our world, and everyone kind of loves this person, so, you know, they treat it very well. It's not strong, harsh imagery. It's, it's looking towards what they're doing for us, even though this person may be a tyrant underneath. The antagonist movie, movement is getting it done to me it's just yeah. people who uh who want to to make things happen and do what they want but do it on a very high level and make it available to anyone who is is willing to look and listen you're watching Intagovision. <laughs> so we're outside of the uh guggenheim museum and the thing about art and the way it works today is that you, you either have to have money or do something stunning to make it out there in the world. And in a museum like this, it's, uh, you know, a, a rich guy comes along and finds an artist and, and backs him, but the, the chances of that happening for the average artist is like close to nothing. So that this is the, these are the type of things that make the antagonist movement important because it's, uh, it creates a venue for artists who have never shown, who uh, don't have money behind them. Maybe he don't even have an education behind them. It's just uh, an individual who has the drive and the desire to make art. And unfortunately, what makes an artist successful in the world today is money. And the stuff that we show in the galleries that for the one night and the artists that we meet randomly they have quality, they have worth, but they don't have somebody necessarily backing them, and that's that's what makes the antagonist movement important. It um, it's creates venues for artists to show their work, brings artists together, and challenges them to do art that is better, or different, or new. Is that good? French toast. French toast, motherfucker, French toast. French toast, motherfucker, French toast. Say butter and syrup. Syrup French toast. Break the maze and then say what? Ain't no do. Say what? Whip them up good and then what? Soak that bread and then say what? Fire up the grill, say keeping it real. I say what? French toast, French toast, French toast, French toast, motherfucker, French toast, French toast, motherfucker, French toast, 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 this ain't no freedom toast. This ain't no goddamn pot roast. This is motherfucking French toast, French toast, motherfucker, French toast, a French toast, motherfucker, French toast. Say it, butter and syrup. Say it, French, pick it, French, take it, toast, take it, toast, French toast, motherfucker.